good day. My name is Michael Mogondo and I'm going to present uh, on the subject of community-based care and support, uh, looking at the certificate level first here. And uh, I'm going, this presentation uh, will solely be a purpose of a guide and uh, to guide you with regard to your assignments. There are four assignments that you are expected to complete. So during this time, I'm going to explain to you exactly what is expected from you to complete this assignment. Uh, this presentation is not to give you the answer, but only to serve as a guide for you to get the answer and for you to prepare for your assignment and then to present it and submit it according to what's expected from you. Our experience uh, for many years uh, is that sometimes students do not understand uh, when they are expected uh, to complete and uh, submit an assignment. So it's very important for you to do three things. First, to read your assignment, understand your assignment, and number three is to answer the what is required from you or what is asked from you. So this is why we do this presentation, so that you as a student uh, can prepare yourself and then present and submit the assignment that's requested. So as I said, there are four assignments uh, that you are expected to do. So I'm going to explain the four assignments and then we're going to go for the next 25 minutes or so and going through all the assignments and explain to you uh, what is expected from you. And as I said, the purpose of this presentation is to give you a guide, is to explain to you what is expected from you as a student. Uh, the first assignment is uh, looking at um, um, the definition of home-based care and uh, what uh, the World Health Organization, or how does the World Health Organization define uh, uh, home-based care? And then once uh, you understand what home-based care is based on the uh, World Health Organization definition, then it is expected from you to do certain things. The first one is you have to discuss the current status of home-based care in Namibia. Uh, you and when you're going to discuss the the word discuss means that you have to explain in detail. You have to give practical example, and you have to uh, to elaborate and, and expand on on your discussion as much as possible. And once you uh, uh, look at the status, then you're going to make reference to what the government of Namibia is doing um, uh, with regard to home-based care. Uh, how do they address home-based care and what measures uh, did the government put in place to address home-based care uh, within Namibia? And then uh, thirdly, of course, you are going to look at what challenges do home-based caregivers experience? Um, what are the problems they experience? And even the organization that are employing this home-based organization, whether it's NGO, non-governmental organization, uh, whether it's government. So it's very important that the first assignment look at the definition, uh, the, the status of home-based care, the challenges, the problems of home-based care, and of course, uh, what measures the government of Namibia has uh, as, as put in place uh, to address uh, the, the issues uh, of home-based care in Namibia. The second assignment, or assignment number two, um, will look at the roles of a home-based care giver. You are going to discuss the terms of reference. You're going to list, and for every list or, or, or point that you are going to list, then you have to discuss in detail what is the role of a home-based care giver. Um, and then, of course, you're going to look at the burdens. And, uh, and many of the caregivers are having burdens. They are overburdened because they are overworked. Uh, they are exhausted. They are experiencing burnout. They are stressed uh, because of the, the burden that's placed on them. And then, of course, you are going to look at um, the Ministry of Health and Social Services. Uh, what supporting services do they have in place uh, when it comes to the role of home-based caregivers in Namibia. So it's very important for you to understand and then uh, to explain that in detail. The third assignment, or assignment number three, is looking at the principle of WASH. Uh, WASH stands for Water, Sanitation, uh, Hygiene, uh, Water, uh, Hygiene and Sanitation. So there are certain principles that you have to look at. 
how does water, uh, clean water, uh, and then uh, good uh, hygiene and good healthy sanitation has an effect on people that are living with HIV AIDS. And if you have a poor water um, uh, hygiene uh, and sanitation uh, conditions, uh, how does that have a negative effect on, on, on people uh, in general and then also when it comes to infection of people living with HIV AIDS. So and then it's expected from you to give a list and then for each list you have to discuss in detail, uh, in detail uh, what actions are you going to take uh, to adhere to the water uh, sanitation and hygiene uh, principle. So it's very important for you to understand, it's very important for you to understand when you are going to discuss it, you are first going to talk about water. What impact does it have? You're going to then secondly, you're going to talk about the hygiene. What is hygiene? You're going to explain. And then thirdly, you're going to talk about sanitation. The fourth assignment, or assignment number fourth, is uh, you are requested um, to establish a home-based care uh, project uh, in any informal settlement in Namibia. And uh, it's very important that, uh, number one, when you are going to do assignment number four, you are first going to define what is an informal settlement. Then secondly, is you're going to uh, explain now, is what kind of home-based care project are you going to have? And then, uh, very important, where is this project going to be situated? And then, why did you establish this specific project in this informal settlement? in that specific. And how are you going to establish this home-based care project? So it's very important that when you're going to look through this for assignment that you need to follow these guidelines. And as I say, the purpose of this presentation is just to guide you, for you, uh, to assist you, to help you to finish or to uh, implement or to submit your, your assignment. So I'm going to go now in details. Uh, Per, per assignment and, and I'm going to look through it. The first assignment, of course, which is very important is you first need to define home-based care. What is home-based care? Uh, we know what the World Health Organization is saying is, what does UNICEF say? What does other organizations say? How do they define home-based care and support? Um, how does that impact the, the community itself? Why home-based care? Uh, and who are the, the beneficiaries of this home-based care? So you have to explain in detail, uh, which is very important, that you need to understand. And in your assignment, when you start with a definition and even you discuss the roles of of, of the home base care, it's very important for you to look, to, to take cognizance that, that, that there are so many other uh, 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 views on home base care. And now, home base care in an uh, 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 African perspective might be different than, in, than that in a European perspective or in an American perspective or in an Asian perspective. So, it's very important that you have to explain home base care in the context of Namibia in the context of a community, especially uh, communities that are poor. And as I say, it's very important that you have to look into that. So uh, secondly, uh, home-based care is, is family-centered. And, uh, and in your assignment, you are going to explain, of course, um, uh, how does home-based care impact families and, and what role does families play when it comes to home-based care. Families that are home-based care give us themselves. And, and then you're going to discuss in your assignment the support services that are available from the community and the support services that even the ministry or the government of Namibia is then giving uh, to communities uh, that are terminally ill. Then thirdly or secondly, um, uh, you are going to look at a treatment. Uh, those that are going to, uh, the clients that are actually uh, uh, receiving home-based care, uh, what treatment are they doing and, and how can you ensure that they, that, they, that they adhere to treatment? And then 
counseling is very important. So these are some of the things that you have to look at uh, when it comes on. And of course, you're going to also going to discuss the challenges when it comes to treatment adherence. Uh, uh, you are going to look at the issues of counseling, confidentiality. So all the different challenges that are being experienced by home-based caregivers. And of course, which is very important, the beneficiaries, those that are receiving home-based care, uh, how do you uh, retain that services? And, and the whole retention, uh, when it comes to uh, the maintenance of this home-based care, where there is lack of funding, lack of resources, what does the community-based organization do, or you as an individual? So in your assignment, you have to discuss this in detail, uh, so that uh, at the end of the day, when you are going to submit the assignment number one, you are going to talk about the roles of uh, you're going to share of the home-based caregivers, the burdens, the challenges they experience, and of course the supporting service from the community itself, and then from the government of Namibia through the Ministry of Health and Social Services. The second assignment, or assignment number two, is uh, you are going to look at, as I say, um, you're going to look at the informal, uh, at, at the informal caregiver. You first going to start is um, what is the role of a caregiver. Um, 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 and now, I have put uh, a definition here uh, for you to, to understand, but uh, you will be expected in your assignment to give more explanation and, and more in-depth explanation. But this is just to recap uh, uh, what's in your study guide, and I will make, I encourage you to make reference to your study guide or your study manual uh, when you want to look uh, on what uh, uh, caregivers us and the reason why uh, I call them informal caregivers is because many of these caregivers are not uh, officially employed they don't get salaries they are volunteering they are not in a formal uh, employment services with government or private sector many of them are individuals or members of community out of their free will without any compensation rendering service to those that are terminally ill or those uh, that are affected uh, with any kind of diseases. So these are individuals that give ongoing care and they give assistance, as I say, without pay. And it's very important for you to understand that they are there to support the need um, of uh, friends and, 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 and so on. And many of these caregivers uh, are not professionals themselves. They, are, they, they, they don't have any qualification. All what they have is they have a passion, they have a desire to help. And of course, um, a government and also other organizations take these volunteers and then train them uh, so that they can give uh, effective um, care and services to those that are going through these experiences. So it's very important for you to understand that you know and what the ministry is also doing when it comes to caregiving and, and how and what support they can give. So in your assignment, uh, it's very important that you look at this and, and many people they have got, as I say and I explained earlier, they've got different definition of view about caregivers, but you have to give the context of Namibia in the context of where you are uh, as an individual, whether it's in a rural area or in an urban context, you have to explain that in detail. So, and as I go on, um, there are different roles, so this is just a pyramid that I've actually looked at and I want to share with you, where you have to look at the, the roles of home-based caregiver, which is very, very important. So, the first thing is, uh, if you can look at the pyramid, there are three things. If you look within the pyramid, in the gray area, you have the patient itself. Number two, you've got the informal caregiver. And number three is you have the relationship between the patient and the caregiver. So it's very important to keep that holistic picture. That, that in your discussion and in your assignment, you have to bring out uh, the needs of a patient, the role of a caregiver, and then the relationship of both of them. And, and then bring out, uh, and then discuss uh, what positive 
uh, factors are there uh, uh, for the patient itself, what negative factors are there for the patient itself, and then also the factors that are positively influenced on best caregivers, and then also the negative factors. So, and then of course the relationship are also having positive and negative factors, and it's very important for you to know that as a patient you've got your needs. So what happens if your needs are not met, if you have home-based scanning? What happens if your needs are met as a patient? And then also the other way around. So it's very important that in your discussion, in your assignment, you have to discuss in detail what the roles are of both uh, the, the patient and the home-based caregiver. Now, the government of Namibia came up with a specific standard, and uh, if you look at your slide, uh, this is one of the guides, uh, a guideline that the, the government of Namibia have put in place, uh, which was launched already in 2010. So I will encourage you to go uh, to the website or to the library or even to the Ministry of Health and get a copy of this home-based case. So this uh, guide or this uh, guide a uh, line uh, guide uh, is a guide for 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 for, for home based caregiver all over the country and there are specific standards that are being discussed in this guideline and i will then encourage you that in your assignment you can also make reference to this guideline in this guideline you will look at the definition it discuss the role the challenges the support mechanism uh, uh, their role within the community uh, all of this uh, what you need. So make reference or make use of the study guide, uh, uh, the study guide of the Ministry of Health, uh, which are the national standard on home-based care. Uh, they also discuss the issues of volunteerism, the issues of compensation. So these are some of the aspects that you have to look at. And it's very important for this uh, course that you need to have uh, the study guide or this guide uh, by the Ministry of Health also in your library as much as possible. So we're going to discuss now the, the third assignment uh, and the third assignment is looking at uh, WASH. Um, WASH stands for Water, Sanitation and Hygiene. Now it's very important that uh, in any community that, uh, that you as a person uh, to be healthy, you need to have a clean drinking water. So it's very important that water plays a very important role. And in your, your assignment, you have to discuss about uh, water. What are the benefits of water? Why is water needed? So you have to explain this in detail in your assignment. And then you define what water is. After that, then number two, is you're going to look at sanitation. You're going to give a definition of what is sanitation. Why is sanitation uh, uh, important? What are the impact of sanitation? And then thirdly, in your assignment, you're going to define hygiene. What is hygiene? Why is hygiene so very important? And most of the diseases that we are experiencing is because of poor water and sanitation and hygiene uh, condition in our community. Many of us don't have clean drinking water. Many of us are not having toilets uh, or, uh, or where we can actually uh, relieve ourselves. Many of us are not cleaning ourselves. Many of our children, after going to a toilet, we don't wash our hands. Basic practices of, of personal hygiene. Now, all those uh, uh, aspects that can have a big influence on your health and, 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 and it can create uh, diseases uh, uh, which is not very good. So it's very important that you have to discuss in this assignment uh, the, the importance of, of water and sanitation and how important it is when you use uh, uh, these principles, it's how you can prevent uh, diseases. Um, then thirdly is in your assignment um, you are going to uh, discuss is how do you integrate water and HIV? What role does WASH play on HIV AIDS? Uh, you're going to look at the different dynamics, you're going to look at HIV. For example, uh, uh, um, people 
that are uh, full blown AIDS or that are actually on ARV is when they go, when they're experiencing the the the, 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 the area, uh, how does uh, clean war, uh, personal hygiene has an impact on them, the issues of sanitation. So it's very important that you have to look at all of this. You have to explain water and HIV AIDS, sanitation, HIV AIDS, hygiene, HIV AIDS. So it's very important. People living with HIV AIDS are very vulnerable, you know, where, where you have a poor water sanitation and hygiene condition. You are going to discuss is how does poor water sanitation hygiene condition have an impact on people living with HIV AIDS mm -hmm. and especially those that are on home based care. So this is something that you have to explain in detail and you have to elaborate in detail uh, which is very very important. Um, there are so many people especially those in informal settlements uh, uh, that don't have the facilities, toilets or they don't have any water facilities or sanitation facilities when they go into the bush and relieve themselves uh, uh, defecation as we call it, um, uh, you know, they don't wash their hands, they come back and with those hands that are already dirty, they, they eat and then they reinfect themselves. And what about people that are on ARV, you know, being exposing themselves uh, because of lack of, of hygiene? Uh, and sanitation that they can actually uh, can create other diseases uh, which are actually not common or uh, uncommon for especially for those that are being affected. So it's very important in your study, uh, in your assignment, you have to explain this in detail. You have to elaborate. Uh, you have to give practical examples. You have to give a reference. So it's very important that you need to, to follow that guideline. So. There is a very, very good book uh, that I will actually uh, give reference to. Uh, UNICEF uh, uh, wrote a very beautiful study guide on, on and, and they've got uh, a 15-year uh, strategy on water, sanitation, and hygiene. Um, I will encourage you, you can go to the website, you can Google it, uh, you can download this book, booklet. Uh, it's very important. It will help you in your study, in your assignment. So get a copy of this book uh, to really understand uh, the, the principle and the importance of water sanitation and hygiene and what impact uh, it does have uh, on your health. So, so I encourage you, get a copy of this book uh, from UNICEF, um, so which can also encourage you. And if you can look at 2016-2030, uh, uh, that, that's in line with Namibia Vision 2030. Uh, it also in line with the Sustainable Development Goals or the SDGs, um, especially uh, SDG number three, uh, where it looks at health. So it's very important uh, that you have to look at the sources and you can also make a reference of it. The other book that I will source, I will also encourage you that you have to look at is uh, Water. It uh, uh, wrote a very good study guide and it's a briefing note on how do you in integrate HIV AIDS uh, and, and water sanitation. And they give examples of in Southern Africa or in SADC, uh, which include Namibia. Uh, they give some statistics and, and, and this note was released in last year in 2016. So it, it's recent information that you can use and, and, and they also discuss is uh, uh, why does water uh, uh, sanitation and hygiene matters for people with HIV AIDS. So they discuss it, uh, especially those that are on ARV, how they can use it. And then they are also going to give you some practical example on water, uh, uh, especially when you're on ARV, uh, how, what is the need of water, what is the capacity or the intake of water that you need. And it's not just for people living with HIV AIDS, it's for anyone, any human being, you need water intake as much as possible. Especially when we look at our situation in Namibia, where it's very hot and, and you can quickly be dehydrated. So this is very important that you also look at this um, if, uh, this booklet, uh, the briefing note uh, by the uh, organization Water Aid, um, and you can even type in the title uh, as it is an integrated approach to HIV AIDS and water sanitation hygiene in Southern Africa. You can Google it. So it's a very important 
source for you to look at. And as I say, it's part of your assignment. And, uh, and the, as I say, the purpose of this uh, presentation is not to give you answers, but to give you a guide. So the last and fourth uh, uh, assignment uh, is uh, looking at informal settlement. And as I said earlier, you first need to define what is an informal settlement. You have to give a definition. Now, now I'm going to give you uh, uh, just an example. Now, the first thing, many of the settlements are in, uh, in towns. They can be in rural or in urban, doesn't matter. But these are settlements that are not formal, uh, approved by the local authority or by the local municipality. These are buildings that are being built uh, um, illegally by people, and, they, and, and some of them call them shacks. And many of these uh, uh, shacks are being built, uh, which is not part of the plan of the government, and sometimes not without any planning uh, approval, as I said earlier. So it's very important that in your assignment you have to explain what is an informal settlement. And then, of course, is that what is very important, now that you know what is an informal settlement, you have to come up with a, a community-based uh, 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 project. The question that you're going to first ask yourself, number one, is how are you going to identify the informal settlement within the community? You first need to look at different strategies. Now, there is a very uh, good uh, tool that I can recommend you for you to do. I call it uh, community mapping, uh, mapping of community, where you go out and in a community. And this is a tool that you can use. And, and this whole mapping is you're going to look at the environment the community is looking at. Then you're going to look at the needs of the community. What are the challenges and what are the problems? And based on that, then you will come up uh, with a project. And of course, this mapping that you are going to do within the informal settlement, uh, it will give you very good insight on, 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 on the condition this community are then living in. And it can help you then, is when you come up with this project uh, for the community in the informal settlement, uh, then you can, of course, empower this, this community. Now, as I said, it's very important that you have to say what kind of project you're going to establish, where are you going to establish this project, why did you establish this project and how are you going to implement this project? So it's very important for you to understand that when you are going to do this project that you need to involve the community. Now, when you look at community projects uh, and in your assignment, you have to explain what is a community project. You have to explain what is a project. I'm not going to give you the answer. As I say, part of this presentation is to give you a guide. You have to do that. So you first look and you define a project. Then you say is, how can the community uh, take ownership of this project? How can they benefit? How can they have access? And at the end of the day, this community are, uh, are going to be actively involved. And this is what I call a participatory approach. Now, a participatory approach is where you involve community. Communities are actively involved from the beginning of the project, during the, the project, and during the end of the, and, and at the end of the project. So it's very important for you that in your assignment, you have to go through these aspects, as I've explained to you, a community project which is then focused on the informal settlement. So I hope uh, that uh, these presentations uh, helped you and guide you uh, for you to prepare and then of course at the end of the day submit your proposal. So I wish you all the best and, and, and as I say make reference to your study guide and then also uh, from time to time you can listen to this presentation. Thank you.